What's up guys, this is the Gospel According to Mark with a C. He is I and I am he. Just taking some time to tell you exactly what's on my mind. Thank you for joining me once again, my friends. Hope all is well with you. Listen guys, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, Star Wars, Ahsoka, the series that's on now. As you guys know, I said in my last video, I am not watching this series. It's not like it's a boycott. I'm just not interested in it whatsoever. And honestly, I think I'm kind of over Disney Star Wars and their pathetic way of telling their stories. I'm over the Filoni-verse, and um, I'm not going to fake it. I just don't want to watch it. However, there have been some very interesting debates that have spun off from this show. And I do want to chime in on this because I do still care about Star Wars, and... um. I'm kind of unsure about some of the things that I'm hearing because it kind of challenges my preconceived notions. You know, what I believed all of these years, and I don't think I'm the only one. So I need a little bit of help in the uh, comment section, if you will. And there's two things, okay? Uh, the second one, which is, is Star Wars, in fact, for kids? Okay, I'm going to tackle that on another video. But this one right here is, is it true that everyone can have the force everyone can use the force everyone can be a jedi if they just have the will the talent the midi chlorians and the training all right that could be like anyone could have it if they could just have these things the will the talent the midi chlorians and the training okay so that's what's being put out there with this ahsoka series and i see a lot of people talking about it so i want to get your opinion on this and your thoughts can anyone in fact be a force user can anyone be a jedi i know the force surrounds all of us the force is in all of us as is what is told in the story but can we actually utilize that or can they utilize that in the story is the question because i gotta be honest with you my idea of of that was that no it, it wasn't you know i always saw the jedi as something more mystical you know something more um uh, mythical you know something more special like the jedi to me were the chosen and within the chosen you had the chosen one which would be anakin i didn't think that everybody could be a force user or a jedi if so it kind of brings up some issues for me some real world issues in this particular context all right but first just to give you a little bit more of that context, I want to read this article that I saw here on GameRant.com. Okay, so I'm not going to read the whole thing, but here's a little excerpt of it. We'll start with the headline. It says, Star Wars Ahsoka doubles down on one controversial lore point from the sequel trilogy. And then it says, Star Wars Ahsoka has featured a piece of controversial lore from the Star Wars sequel trilogy, but it's one, of, but it's one that George Lucas endorsed. Okay, so you know they got to go with that. So we're going to start here. The most recent Ahsoka episode has tread on some new territory as it doubles down on a bit of lore that originates from director Ryan Johnson's Star Wars The Last Jedi. Bim, bim, bim! Woo! That is a name I have not heard in quite a while. A film from the sequel trilogy that has been a subject of contention within the fan base and one that Johnson has had to defend the more goofy aspects of. Now, while attempting to train Sabine Wren, no relation to Ky Kylo Wren, I, I mean, it's with a W, so I guess it's different, but still, I mean, come on, let's use some imagination here. So, while attempting to train Sabine Wren to become a Jedi in Ahsoka Episode 3, the titular character reiterates that because the Force exists within and around everyone and everything, anyone can access it given enough training and will. Remember that, given enough training and will. Now... Star Wars creator George Lucas, who has had some small criticism for showrunner Dave Filoni in the past, fully supports the decision, as he has previously expressed his agreement with this idea. Allegedly, this is a quote from George Lucas, A lot of people will get confused about the Force. They see it as something that you can find and pick up and put in your head, and suddenly you have the Force. Whereas it's always been designed so that every living thing has the force, Lucas said. The amount of force, which is like talent or intelligence, is different in every person. Some of it is inherited, but is no more than a talent. It's not something you can acquire. It's something you have to learn to use. I have the power to lift that cup off the table using the force, but I can't do it unless I've been trained to do it. 
That's supposed to be a quote from George Lucas. Now, the conversation around the decision to double down on this bit of lore isn't the first gripe fans have expressed about the show. With one change in Star Wars Ahsoka upsetting fans in the previous episode, I don't know what that is because I didn't watch the previous episode, whatever. However, unlike the addition of a previously exclusive power to the protagonist's skill set, the concept of the Force being something that anyone can learn to control has great utility for the franchise as it starts to explore the fate of the Jedi teachings after the Order's destruction. Yeah, you think so? This does have the potential to change everything when you really think about it. I'll go into that in a minute. Like Sabine, many others might also be taught the way of the Jedi to help restore the Order in that way. However, fans might hope that the next candidates aren't Mandalorian and don't find it so difficult. Alright, let's see if there's anything else here. Uh... Uh, nothing else here. I mean, I'll leave that link in the uh, pinned comment below. But uh, anyway, guys, yeah, um, this does bring up some serious questions for me. Like, if we go under the assumption that everybody can utilize the Force, then I have to ask the question, why was the Empire so successful? Why did they rule the galaxy with fear? Why didn't all of these worlds that were out there make it required learning? Or at least make it a requirement to learn which of your citizens had the greatest potential for usage of the force when you really think about it guys the jedi are said to uh actually they say everyone has these midi chlorians in them right it's just a matter of how many they have in them but everyone can have millions maybe even billions of midi chlorians and they use their little uh, level system to determine which ones are the most powerful or which ones have the greatest capacity or potential to be able to use these midi chlorians. Now, it was determined that Anakin midi chlorian level was over 20,000, I believe it was. The average Jedi, I think, is down around something like what, 12,000, 13,000, something like that. So Anakin was said to be the most powerful. But if nobody is testing, if there is no official testing, um, uh, uh, system that they have in place who's to say whether anybody else of the billions of people in the galaxy or billions of uh, species in the galaxy might have had more than him because now we're not talking about mysticism we are no longer in science fantasy we're in science fiction some of you don't know the difference between science fantasy and science fiction science fantasy doesn't necessarily have to adhere to science all right but now we are following the science, just like real life. It is now science. Midi-chlorians and your capacity for it is something that is in everybody, and everybody has the potential to be able to use that. So my question is, if all you need is the will, the talent, the midi-chlorians, and the training, then why wouldn't you have had like a, um, almost like a, a service, like an armed forces, where they actually came up with a system where you would have your citizens tested perhaps at birth to see who's got uh, this amount of midi chlorians you start training people because if, every, if everybody has this capacity and you know that the evil empire is out there and they're oppressing and abusing your whole galaxy wouldn't you have the will we're talking about you need to have the will wouldn't you have the will to survive by making your people reach their fullest potential to defend themselves. I mean, after all, when you're talking about the will, look at the end of uh, The Last Jedi, for example. Look at the mighty broom boy, for example. He had the will to sweep that floor, okay? So without any formal training, I guess he had the will and the talent and the midi-chlorians, and he was able to teach himself to use the force. He had the burning will to sweep that floor so he was able to utilize the force because everybody has the force everybody is special everybody gets a participation prize that's basically where we're coming from ray nobody okay but she can do everything because the force is in everybody so that's basically what we're talking about here so if you can use the force because you have a will to sweep the floor why can't you use the force as an average everyday person to defend yourself from stormtroopers. I'm not saying you have to go up against the Emperor or Darth Vader or the Inquisitors or any fucking body else, but you can definitely have your um, your citizens do more than just be like, oh, we're so scared. Oh, we need the Jedi. Mother effer, you can be the Jedi because it's in everybody. 
That just makes sense to me. So why even have the Jedi Academy or the Jedi Temple or anything like that? Why even have the younglings? As a matter of fact, if everyone's got it in them, no matter how old they are, because remember, Yoda didn't want to train Anakin. He didn't want to train Luke. He said they were too old, but you go for the younglings. The younglings don't even have the will because they're not old enough to have the will. Now you're talking about consent and the age of consent. Ooh, we're getting creepy now. You're taking these children away from their families to train them. Why? Why? If everybody has it, you see what the problem is after that? You know, if everybody has it, then fuck it. Why even call it the Jedi Temple? Why not just call it the Jedi Community College? That's what it is. It's the Jedi Community College. And no offense to anyone who went to uh, community college. I did too for a short time before I realized it was a racket. But anyway, the Jedi Community College, all right? So it's open to anybody. Anybody can get there. And when you talk about the chosen one, maybe you're talking about the chosen one to receive financial aid. Maybe that's what it is. Anakin was the chosen one to receive the financial aid. We choose you, Anakin. Here, take this check for $7,000 and go to the Jedi Community College. That's basically what it is. It's a lot less special than how it used to be now, isn't it? Because anybody can be that. Anybody. So that's the problem that I'm having with this, guys. All right? It doesn't make sense. All right? If we're all force sensitive and, you know, we can all harness that power and use it and all of that stuff, then it makes the story a lot less meaningful. Why would Luke have to be the one to stand up in this galaxy? Why was he the final hope? Why didn't Yoda say uh, when, when Kenobi said that boy is our last hope or our only hope or anything like that? Why didn't he just say, no, everybody's got it. Everyone can do this. We just have to start training more people. There's got to be more people out there who together can stand up against the evil empire. You know what I'm saying? It makes no sense to me whatsoever, guys. But listen, you guys can get in the comment section and let me know if I'm like crazy far off from this. Like, how do you feel about that concept? The concept of everybody being able to use the force everybody can be trained it's like karate i think they said george said the karate is strong with you the karate is strong with you you know it, it's strong the karate is strong in my family fuck it why not put up a, a a force dojo you know on every corner you know cobra kai dojo uh force edition <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know, guys, but get in the comment section and let me know how you feel about this. To me, it makes no sense. It just goes to show you where we are with Star Wars now. Um, I It's like I was saying in the last video, it's less special than it used to be. It's less magical when you feel like just freaking everybody can do this thing, guys. But um, anyway, guys, thank you for listening. You can get in the comment section and let me know how you feel about this. As always, you can like, you can share, and you can subscribe. That is very important when it comes to beating this algorithm, guys. I need that. I need for you to give that like, you know, share it if you feel like it. And, of course, um, you know, I, I appreciate your uh, super thanks and, uh, and your subs and all of that. Well, guys, I look forward to seeing what you have to say about all of this. And I will catch you on the next one. This is The Gospel According to Mark with a C. Rock on.